welcome to Rose Opal Knits, our knitting and other craft podcast. This is episode 22. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm Daphne. <laughs> and I'm Erica. And she's my daughter-in-law. Yep. I'm her mother-in-law. And do you want to just go right into finished objects? Yeah. We'll sure. save all the chatter for the end. Okay. So, I finished quite a bit of stuff. But I finished this pair of socks. And these have been on my needles for a while. But they are just vanilla socks. And these are the longest pair of vanilla socks I've made myself so far. So it is one of the yarns I got for from Alabama when I went. And it is the Dream Smooshy with Cashmere. Something like that. Mm-hmm. But it is a December 2018 pop-up colors. I think that's the color name because that's the only thing that says the color. But... It is a knit on a US 1.5. I don't know what that is in millimeters. 2.5 milli- millimeters, maybe? I think so. But it's just a really simple vanilla sock. I think I did 18 stitches for the one by one rib cuff. cuff. And then it's just vanilla. And then the slip stitch heel and then a wedge toe. Mm-hmm. Where, where were and you I, the last time you showed them? I. I don't really remember. I think I had one sock. Okay. But I might have shown the cuff on the other sock. Mm-hmm. But I don't remember. <laughs> and, okay, so I knit these kind of long, right? For myself, at least. I know other people knit them all the way up their sock, past sock blockers and everything. I don't know. <laughs> these are long for me. But um, I knit them longer. And I still have 44 grams left. Mm-hmm. That's yep. how much I normally have left when I knit my short little socks, too. Yeah. So, I have a lot of this left, so... I thought when you knit your shorter socks, you usually use about 45 grams. I don't think so. I think, oh, I, use okay. a, I, think I use close to 50. Yeah. I mean, I only use 56 for these. Well, it probably depends on the yardage, too, because, you know, 100, 100 grams can be 400 yards and it can be 463 yards so yeah. i don't know how many yeah. yards there in that but it's it just okay. depends and then <laughs> i'll stick with knitting for right now i'll do this one <laughs> then sorry i have two things in this bag <laughs> but i have a finished hat for my cousin and so not quite finished yet but we've okay. the ends <laughs> it's finished just not the ends okay <laughs> this is the only thing that has ends on it right now okay you guys so it's okay but anyway so it's like I think it's three and a half inch brim. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know my words today. <laughs> and then, so the numbers I used were from the barley pattern by Tin Can Knits. And then it's just stocking it. I didn't do the actual pattern. And then the decreases that are also in that pattern. But then I ended up with like, a, it's not showing as well, but it is like a point to it. There you go. I don't know why, but it's okay. So, but. This hat fits both me and my son, Mason. Just put it on, put it on. No. <laughs> okay, fine. Hold on. Because it's not pointy once it's on. Yeah. Mm-mm. Like, I'm not going to be able to get it on right, and then my hair's going to look terrible after. <laughs> it won't look terrible. I don't wear hats, so. But yeah, it is pointy. Oh, it is pointy. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. It's for a little kid. It looks cute. It's okay. <laughs> Which is not a color on me. But yeah. I think so, it looks good on you. I think, hold on, I can tell you what needle size I'm going to use. It is a US 7 4.5 millimeter. So, that's all. And it's just a one by ri- one rib for the brim and then stuck in it. And you, you, you said you used the numbers from the barley hat pattern yep. by 10 can knits. Okay, cool. Yep. All right, and I have a finished pair of socks. The last time I showed these socks, okay, I knit these socks. They were these are my first pair of two at a time socks, cuff down. And the last time I showed them, I was right here when this both of them were right here where this marker is. Is that before the heel or after? It was, I think it was before the heel. Okay. And um, maybe it wasn't. I don't remember. Sorry. Uh-huh. Um, but then I. Well, I've got the heel, and then I knit down the foot. And so let me tell you about this yarn. This is a Regia 6-ply DK weight yarn. It's the Regia Perfect, and that is the colorway. Now, you can see them. 
See how long that toe is? <laughs> and, um... I feel like it, it might have been, like... I feel like when they're in, like, like doing the yarn, they might just keep going with it. But then they that's here in the yellow. So never mind. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> um, but you'll see here how there's a stripe of gray. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, there's a stripe of gray from the heel. Like, I guess whatever is left over from the heel that you knit, it'll, it'll just carry the stripe to the front. I didn't want that. So I just cut, I just cut my yarn and attached it you know, attach the pink to it and then started knitting again. I figured I'd rather sew in an extra end than have that, that gray stripe. I mean, it's not horrible, but I just wanted the gray heels. So I knit these, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I knit these on a US three, which is a 3.25 millimeter. And this is how much I have left. Um, one's 23 grams and one's 24 grams. So I definitely am going to uh, wind that up into a ball and put them with my sock scraps. What else did I want to say? Um, wanted to see, it's 150 gram ball. That's oh, probably, why. yeah, that's why I have so much left. Um, but so what I did, I usually knit, when I knit fingering weight socks, I usually cast on, um, 64 stitches and most of them I knit on a US one. Um, so for DK weight socks, because, um, we've been asked in the past, I cast on 48 stitches and, um, and that's, that's the number I use to knit the DK weight socks and socks. And then I do a slip stitch heel and then I usually use the umbrella toe pattern that is a K Joan of the Bakery Bears pattern because I like that fit um, and for this pair I just added um, on either side of the front these pearl two pearl stitches to go down the sides but I think that's it you have a couple more yeah <laughs> I have two more I'll save that one for a minute okay so, oh, I finally get to do something for the finish of fall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lucky, guys, I did it. We'll talk about I, that at the end. <laughs> anyway, so this is my turtle dove by Spots Chico. And, hold on, I can't even see where I'm at. There you go. That's where I was. So I did a couple more inches on the body and then the ribbing, which is four inches of twisted rib. And it's a split hem. Not you, my favorite thing. You did but, have fun. <laughs> It was just so much. So, okay, so I did the front, and then, well, I did the body, all the way to the rim, the hem, whatever this is called. <laughs> Look, my words aren't here today. But anyway, so I did the front, and then I went to the sleeve. So, I have both the sleeves done. So, they are <laughs> they look long, but I added length to all parts of this, because I don't like crop tops, and I don't like shorter sleeves. So, I did the front ribbing, the one sleeve, the back ribbing, and then the other sleeve for it. Do you want me to hold it? Sure. Okay. <laughs> and then that is two inches of also twisted rib. There's a lot of twisted rib in this. The only two differences that I've made in this pattern is the length of the neck, mm -hmm. the turtleneck. I only did two inches. And I also went up to like a ten and a half, a US ten and a half for that because the first time I did it, it did not fit right at all. Now what what size did you use to knit the body? Nine. Oh okay. Yeah. So but then the rest of the ribbing I also just used a nine because I knew I didn't want it to like flare out or anything mm -hmm. or lay weird. So this is all on a nine two. I think you're supposed to go to a ten or go up a needle size, whatever it is. I don't know what the pattern calls oh, so, for. So a lot of times you go down a needle size when you That's what ribbing. I meant. Mm hmm I didn't I didn't want it to change like I wanted it to lay like that. I like the way it lays when you just use the same needle, actually. Oh, okay. So most of the time, I don't change my needles for the ribbing. Mm -hmm. But, so I changed the length of the collar. Mm -hmm. That's a word. <laughs> and then the length of the, the body. The length of the body. I added like four inches to the body. Mm -hmm. And then I added a couple inches to the sleeves, but I don't know how much. Now it's a split hem. Did the pattern call for a, a split hem? Yeah, you could. there's two options. You could do the split hem or a rolled hem. I chose the split hem. I did not do the... High-low? 
Did it call for a high low? Yes, it did. Oh, okay. I was not feeling it. I was. <laughs> you were I was like, like, they I'm match, I'm done. I'm going to do it. And I was like, nope, they match, I'm done. So, I so was going to So, what yarn is this? This is Plymouth Yarn Co. In the Encore, Encore Tweed. Mm-hmm. Hold on, I think I have a tag in here. I don't have the yarn. Yeah. There's a tag. And the, the color is just a number. So, it's T138. Oh, and all of our show notes will be in the description box below. So I have just a little bit left in that yarn. I just forgot to grab it. But yeah, so I actually really like this yarn. It's, um, put the tag away. <laughs> it is an acrylic blend. So, hold on, let me grab the tag again so I can tell you. Okay. Yeah, it is 75% acrylic, 22% wool, and 3% rayon. But it doesn't feel like a acrylic like that much actually so uh, I like it you mean does it well because you were using red heart too so it doesn't feel like red heart acrylic yes a lot of acrylic feels nice I mean sometimes it doesn't but I like this one Mm -hmm. this one's pretty nice and it's really warm so we'll have to get some finished object pictures of you in it no not today today. okay and then my last finished object is a crochet project and I saw a couple of free patterns like on Instagram, so, and then me and Holden, who's my husband, her son, in case you didn't know, but we play Among Us sometimes, and so this is the little Among Us character, he is crocheted, and so Holden Wait, did you see yellow. free patterns for these characters? Yes. Oh, I didn't, okay, yes. okay. Mm-hmm. He is a free pattern that I found, but, so, okay, I messed up, and I do not crochet very much, but this leg is smaller than this leg. Can you see it? It bubbles out right there. Oh, just barely. <laughs> yeah, it bubbles out a little bit. I don't know what happened. But anyway, so he is sewn in three parts. So you do the body, so the legs, and then go up to the body, and then you do his backpack, and then you do his face. And they're, just, they're so little. Like, I mean, if you've seen, if you've been watching the podcast, I also made a little guy named Donato for mm-hmm. Paisley, who's my daughter. You look like you're hanging out on the screen. Hold on one second. Is he good enough for the camera? No, I didn't. I she didn't. didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so I bought Swish DK from Knit Picks, and this one is Honey is the yellow, and then the black and white are just black and white. So, and it is on a E hook, which is three point five millimeter. Mm-hmm. So, and you have and plans to like crochet like twenty more or something? Not twenty more. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is Mason's actually, but this is Holden's character. But this is the first one, and Mason really liked the little guy. So oh, nice. I said, he could have this one, and I'll make Holden a new one. So, and then Holden's like, you got to make some for my boys, which are his <laughs> guy friends. friends. Yeah. They also play Among Us. <laughs> so I'm knitting, I'm crocheting. Um, I don't know how many more. A lot more. So I had to buy more Swish DK so I can make different we'll colors. Later. Yeah. <laughs> but so this is the first guy. There are more to come before Christmas. <laughs> So. Uh, I have one more finish object. I have to bend down to get it. Sorry. Okay. So, um, in the last episode, I showed new yarn that I had picked up from our local yarn store, the Yarn Maven, and um, didn't have to bust into that second <laughs> skein of it. But I purchased it to knit my husband a cow, and I finished it. So, here, will you hold it? Okay. So, I just... I'll put this on. I swatched it. Yeah, go ahead. (laughs) I swatched it and um, decided what size um, needle to use. And, oh, dropping stuff. Um, But I use a US 9 and a US 8, I guess. (laughs) I can't even read my notes. (laughs) I'm. I must have. Let's see if my needle's in the bag. It's not. Anyway, um, <laughs> I cast on oh, 98 nice stitches. I think. Sorry. Oh yes, I went down to a US 8 to knit the top ribbing, but I casted it on with a US 9 and knit the whole thing with a US 9. So I um, cast it on 98 stitches and I knit one by one ribbing for just eight rounds. And then I went into um, 
Like my hair's all on it already. A pattern. On the sides, I've got, I have one by one ribbing for a specific amount of stitches on both sides. And then I knit straight for eight inches. And then I decreased four stitches and knit for eight rounds. I like, I use the number eight a lot in this pattern. <laughs> I cast on 98 stitches. I knit eight rounds of ribbing. I knit for eight inches. I decreased, you know, four stitches and knit um, eight row, um, eight rounds and then decreased four more stitches and knit eight rounds. And then I started the um, top ribbing and I knit it for eight rounds so <laughs> you know it's just easy to keep track of your numbers if you're using the same number <laughs> but um, that way he said he wanted a cow that fit him here but that he could bring up to cover his nose and ears if he got cold so here it is and he likes it now we'll see if he wears it. <laughs> but, um, so I ended up only using, I forgot to weigh this, most of um, a skein. This is what I have left. I didn't weigh it though, so I'm not sure what it is. Um, but, and again, that was Barocco Ultra Wool in the color 33113. <laughs> um, and when I was knitting that, I kept it in this wool bag that I knit and felted um, probably, I don't know, 10 years ago, nine years ago. But um, Daphne asked me about it when I pulled it out. She was like, did you make that? And I was like, yeah, I should talk about that. So this is a an old finished object. And will you hold that one? And at that same time, I knit a larger companion bag. They're cute. To it. And um, they also hold so much stuff. Yeah, they do. And they're really sturdy. So here's the straps on this one that I just knotted. I think I knotted them before I felted it and I kind of felted. I can't remember. But anyway, I knit them in pieces because I knit like this down the side too and then sewed it together. Do I have one on the bottom? Yep, I have one on the bottom. No, I don't. Mm -hmm. I can't tell. You know, like um. The seam? Yeah, but I um. You do. Maybe yeah, not. but I don't know if I knit a panel. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But it's on the side. Yeah, so it's like a panel. Yeah, I knit a whole panel around it on this one, and then Dropping it. this one I did it similarly, I think. But anyway. Yeah, because so, you can tell on the inside. Like, I mean, you can see where it's seamed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyway, so these are old finished objects from the past. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought I'd share. But it's fun to knit um, things and felt them. But it also takes away from sweater and sock knitting. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's the end of our finished objects. And now we're going to move into whips. I only have two. Oh, okay. Well, I have four, so I guess I'll start. Um, where to start? Um, I'll start here because it'll be easy. So last episode, I showed my cross stitch, and it was, um, I don't need that yet. <laughs> It was a pumpkin pumpkin patch, little pumpkin patch ornament one. And I said I hope to finish it by Halloween. And then we had a bunch of rainy days and I only like to cross stitch on sunny days because I'm weird. But <laughs> <laughs> so she can see better. Yes. It's not because she's weird. <laughs> and um, also I had taken it out of the um, scroll frame that I had it in to show it on the podcast. And so that meant that I had to put it back in the scroll frame. <laughs> and it was just easier to pick up knitting. Um, and then Halloween came and went and October ended and I was no longer in the mood for fall themed cross stitch. Even though it's still fall until well, December. Well, it is, except I was totally feeling Christmas. So. I'm not feeling Christmas. I'm feeling like Christmas colors and I, I, I got, um, the Just Cross Stitch Ornament, um, magazine. So, um, 
I thought it would be fun to knit several of the ornaments out of it. So I just started one. I'm going to pop a picture in so you can see it when I'm talking about it. But um, I'm going to refer to my notes in my cross stitch journal. It is the poinsettia, I spelled it wrong in my journal, <laughs> poinsettia and pine peacock by Kathleen Burla, Burlew. Yeah, Burlew. Um, and there should be a picture on the screen now. And I'm cross stitching it on 32 count white Lugana. And I'm using DMC colors. I substituted those out because I think the pattern calls for Sullivan. So I did not take it out of the hoop because of what happened last time. Um, so I just, ha I just have a small start. There it is. And here are the colors oh, that I'm using. Ooh, that red is not that bright. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, it's a bright red, but it's not that bright. Maybe I can, no, that is so bright, oh my gosh. Yeah. I was hoping if it was like against my darker shirt, it would show up better. Uh -huh. No, that's not bright at all. So, <laughs> the colors that I'm using um, for this project are DMC 3814. DMC 3847. DMC 321. I mean, that is a bright red, but it's not as bright as it is on the screen. That's like neon red on the screen. <laughs> DMC 814. And then DMC 743. So I think these colors, they're not traditional traditional Christmas colors but they work with Christmas and the peacock theme so I think they look pretty together mm -hmm. so that's my first whip and you have two yep. so I've, I'll, I'll share one more okay so I don't know if you guys have heard of um, Judy Jewell of the autumn acorn but she just last week was it earlier this week Yes, because today is Saturday. Today is Saturday, November 7th. <laughs> um, she came out with the... Let me... Hold on. I don't know. Do you need less brightness or more? I think it's brighter. Brighter? Nope, just kidding. Okay, she came out with the Magic Heel Socks. So, see that? So, I was intrigued. Daphne talked talked about it first and she was like did you see these magic heel socks and we were talking about it and she no you brought it up and then I went and got the pattern and then I was talking about it because I don't go on oh yes because yeah, uh -huh. I don't always look at everything on yeah. Opal. yes so it, I guess I mentioned it she bought it and then she was talking about it so I went and purchased it too yeah. <laughs> because my thought process was that that heel could be the perfect heel for children's socks or gift knitting <laughs> yes that was my thought <laughs> <laughs> um so because it's almost it looks kind of like a tube sock but with some give there in the heel area so children's feet grow rather mm -hmm. rapidly i mean they're always going up shoe sizes um every year or Mason goes so. up in shoe size like every three months it's crazy <laughs> so I thought Gosh. you know knitting a heel like that um might extend the amount of time that you know children could wear their socks so I so I had said at the beginning of this year that I was only allowed to cast on a new pair of socks on the first of the month well the first of the month was last Saturday Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> last Sunday so um I decided I had this Regia. She didn't know it was the first and she thought she missed it and she thought she couldn't cast on the socks until she talked to me that day. And Daffy looked at me like I was stupid. <laughs> she was like, today's the first. I was like, and I was like, yay! <laughs> you can do it. You can go do it now. Um, uh, anyway, so I had, I've shown this um, yarn before, Regia Perfect Kids Colors, and I had cast it on. Um, just you know a single sock for my daughter and it was too small so um, I got I just like kind of threw it in the back of my whips area and just left it on the needle so I just pulled it out and so this yarn is kind of all crinkly a little bit but not too bad um, so what I'm doing I'm gonna knit them two at a time but I cast it I cast on 
And I don't know if you remember me talking about this in a previous episode, but I've decided that when I knit socks two at a time, they're going to always be cuffed down probably, but I'm going to knit the cuffs se separately and then put them together on a needle. So I have knit, or at least part of the cuffs until they're stable, because I don't, it's too fiddly with starting out the cuffs two at a time for me. <laughs> I did that. So <laughs> I have seven rows of one cuff here, and then I have three rows of another cuff here. So that's all I have started, but I think they're going to knit up fairly quick. And I'm excited to try them on. Now I just cast on, even though she's my four year old daughter, she has wide block feet. So I decided, I'm knitting them on a US one. So I decided to cast on 56 stitches. Um, so we'll see how they fit. But they should be fine. I mean, 48 fit Mason. Here's the second ball. So there's one, and then there's the one that I'd already knit some of. <laughs> So, oh, and this, I'm holding this in a bag from um, Stitching Plaza on Etsy. Okay. I'm also using the stitch, Stitching Plaza bag. Mm -hmm. Like I finally got the name right here. <laughs> here in my face. Okay, anyway, so this is the same yarn as the sack, just so y'all know. I am also going to, well, I'm already doing it, but cast it on a little cowl for him. So it is split hem. I'm not using a pattern. I cast it on 90 stitches. So 45 on each side. So, and they're just the same length. I don't remember how many stitches I did. I think I did two inches of the ribbing for this to like go along with that because the hat has a lot of ribbing too. But then it's just stock and neck going up. And then that's basically all I have right now. It's still on the US 7 that I was knitting the hat on too. So the yarn's the same. It is Red Heart Super Saver in the pumpkin color. So, and I have so much of this yarn left. Like, mm. And I'm not going to use bright orange. So I don't know what I'm going to do with this bright orange. Because I don't think this cowl is going to take that much yarn either. Because I mean like it's for a little kid. So like they don't have long necks or anything. Mm. So like. Well, you can, I don't I'm sure you'll be able to use it for something at some point, yeah. you know? Yeah, I'm sure I'll figure it out, but right now I'm like, there's a lot of orange yarn, so I figured I'd try to use more of it for him, so, mm -hmm. but that's all I have right now. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just gonna be stockinette and then ribbing, but then the top ribbing's just gonna be not split him, so, mm -hmm. but that's all for this one. And, okay, so you have one more and I have two yeah, I have more. more. Oh, okay, so I'll go. So, ooh. then, I, oh, so <laughs> I had another great plan that made Daphne look at me funny. I was like, Daphne, I figured out how I'm going to finish my Sunset Highway sweater. I'm going to make Sunday's Sunset Highway sweater knitting. So I said, what did I say? Hashtag Sunset Highway Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not actually going to use that hashtag on Instagram or anything. But so what that means is I'm definitely, if I don't touch it through the week, I have to knit on it on Sundays. But I knit on it more than Sunday this last period, two weeks since we last recorded. So here's my Sunset Highway. And this is where I was the last time I showed it. So I did a pretty good amount. I can't wait to have it finished no. and blocked and really see that color work, you know, lay down. But what I'm going to do, will you hold it mm -hmm. real quick, what I ended up knitting, um, I've got this in a Molly Klein design bag. Um, I knit an entire 50 gram ball of this Dale Baby Ool Dale Garn. That's the what I'm using for the body of the sweater. So I knit an entire 50 gram ball. I think what I'm going to do next is, is start working on this sleeve, get the sleeve finished, and then I'll finish the body. And just real quick, in case anyone's curious. 
I'll go over the colors in the color work section. So this color here, which is at the collar, is Queen City Yarn in the French Roast colorway. Queen's Road is on the Queen's Road MCN base, and the color is French Roast. And then this speckly light color there is on Willow Tree Yarn, and it's on the Royale base. Tree yarn Royale. It's the 8515 and it's superwash merino um, nylon on the vintage blooms color. Super pretty. And then the final color, this one is down here, is this one. And it's another Willow Tree yarn on the Royale base 8515 superwash merino nylon. And it, this is the color Orchid. So, and I probably. I don't know. I don't know how much time I'm going to devote to it, but it's definitely going to be finished before the end of the cow, mm -hmm. which we'll talk about the cow in a minute. You're losing your clip. I'm losing my clip. Oh, that I clipped all those together. That's so I could find them easily. <laughs> <laughs> Are you just showing one or are you showing both of them? Do you have one more or no? I do have one more. Do you want me to show it? Okay. 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 It's not much. Okay. Mine's not so, much either. Um, if you follow us on Instagram, you'll see that I planned a um, new start Monday um, and you'll have seen the yarn and everything. So I'll just talk about it briefly for those of you that aren't, don't follow us on Instagram. Here on YouTube and on Instagram, there's a podcast called Wildflower Wool and it is hosted by Louise. And um, she has a new video every um Monday with her new starts. Then every Monday she starts two new projects. Oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> One's usually a dishcloth. That's like her challenge oh, yeah. challenge to herself for the year. And then the other one's whatever she she says whatever the yarn calls to her. <laughs> and um so because she says what did she she says I don't know word for word how she says it, but basically if you don't start it, you can't finish it. And that is so true because, like, what, are, what month are we in? November. Mm -hmm. So we're in month 11. So at least 11 months ago. Um, I, don't, I think it was at the end of last year, but it may have been at the beginning of this year. Um, I purchased this book. And instantly loved this cardigan sweater and knew that I wanted to knit it. And I had purchased this yarn, I think last fall. You've had it for a while. Mm -hmm, to knit um, myself a cardigan in. Really pretty tweed. Um, it's just called black tweed. But um, so I decided that this, I would use this yarn to knit that sweater and I swatched I think it was in January when I swatched. I think my swatch is in here. <laughs> if she can find it. Oh, I know. It's in the bag with the rest of the yarn. See, I have my sweater quantity right here. <laughs> but so my swatch is here. And I, I washed it and blocked it. And, um, and then never cast the cardigan on. So there was no way for me to finish the cardigan because I never casted it on. All these months have passed and I've cast it on so many other projects. <clears throat> but I actually you could really use this cardigan. So the funny thing is, is I was watching Wild, the Wildflower Wool podcast and Louise showed this book. <laughs> and then she said that she, had, she has lots of um, patents, classic wool. And she said that she was going to use her uh, Patton's Classic Wool, I think in the charcoal color, to knit a cardigan from the book. And I was like, if she's casting on that cardigan, which let me look up the name. Like Seaside, something like that? Yes, the Seaside, Seaside Cardigan, I think. Seaside Pleated Cardigan. I said to myself, if she casts on that cardigan, I'm casting mine on too. 
And sure enough, it was that cardigan that she was casting on. Like so. out of all the patterns in the book, <laughs> yeah. same pattern, uh -huh. same yarn, just different colors. Uh huh. So I casted mine on, but I haven't spent a lot of time on it. The whole goal was to just get it cast on so that I then could eventually finish it. Because you can't finish it if you don't start it, right, Louise? <laughs> um, so I managed to knit six rows. That's it. Is it knit in panels or? It's knit top down. Raglan and creases. Oh. It's a cardigan. I knew that. <laughs> I just didn't know the construction. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, it's knit from the top down. Raglan and creases. So um, I, I went back and forth about the size. I'm going to get to the... Um, <clears throat> I've decided that I'm going to knit to the sleeve separation and try it on. And if it's too roomy up here, I'm going to rip it out and start over because I don't like super bulky cardigans. I, I mean, those. I know you do. <laughs> I know you do. Well, I'm bulkier on top, so I don't like to add a bunch of extra bulk. We have this conversation all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so that's my plan. So that's my last uh, work in project. Work in progress. Oh, I should have switched this to switch holders. It's okay. Anyway, so my last work in progress is my Bright Feather by Jennifer Steingau. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you think about that. Uh huh. But anyways, okay. so I, it's kind of hard to show this. It's like curling. But anyways, I was right there. So I'm still in the color work. And like, I have to be in the mindset to do color work. I'm sure a lot of people have to be. But so I did like six rows, I think. Like five or six rows. And so this, this was, this is my first fingering weight color work sweater. So, and I really like it. It's really. Mm -hmm. The colors look great together. I also want this done by Christmas, so it can be my Christmas sweater. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so the colors are, this one is the main color, and it is Socks Yeah by Coop Knit, and it is the. Adventuring. I always forget how to say it. But yeah, so this is still is. the first ball. This is still the first ball I have, and Mason got a hold of it, so it's okay. <laughs> but yeah, it's falling apart a little bit. So Because those come in 50 grams. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So these are 50 grams. So I'm still on the first one, but it's almost done. And then... I don't want you to lose it's, it's okay. okay. Oh, I thought you meant the yarn mm -mm. pulling off. I hope not. Then the brown color is this really pretty brown. And... Most people I know don't like brown, but it's pretty, and I like the color brown. But it's like an orangey brown with the blacks and different shades mm -hmm. of brown, so it's really pretty. But anyway, so this is Noble Character Crafts yarn, and it's called Wilderness. So, and this was bought when her shop was closing, so you cannot get her yarn right now. But I want a whole sweater. One of this yarn. <laughs> I want this as a sweater. That's but fun. so. And this is on a US 5, I think. No, this is a US 6, which is a 4.0 4. millimeter. 4 millimeter needle. That's how you say that. <laughs> and I think, hold on, I can tell you actually which one I'm doing. I'm knitting the fourth size. Just because I don't normally need the fourth size, but... I like sweaters to be a little bit roomier. Like, I don't like my sweaters to be tight at all. So, I normally go up the size for my sweaters. But, I need this done really soon. And, I'm so proud of my foot. And I know yeah, they, they look, look they look kind of messy in some spots, but mm -hmm. other spots it looks really pretty. Mm -hmm. So, I like looking at foots. Mm -hmm. But I'm so excited for this one. And I just finished my last increase in the color work, so now it's just knitting on the stitches I have mm -hmm. and finishing the color work. That's so. always a good feeling. <laughs> it's so much, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so now we're moving into acquisitions. I have a few. That's my pile. Okay. You, you what about you? Um, I'll go first. <clears throat> so. Oh, I forgot you got that. So I had ordered this back in May, um, and it just got here within the last two weeks. 
I had I had emailed the shop owner a couple times and never heard from her. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I had just about decided that I wasn't going to get it. And then I got an email from her one morning and she apologized and said that she was still trying to catch up with COVID-19 orders and um, that it was in the mail and then it showed up. So this is um, Hands On Design Humble Honey. And I had ordered the kit to go with it. So um, it's 32 count slate linen by um, Fabrics by Stephanie and um, the DMC colors that go with it. So I'm not gonna start that anytime soon, but I'll, I have it. Then I also had, um, I also made one purchase with um, Knit Crate um, when they had their double down savings at the end of the month. I ordered this skein of um, URU yarn, Sugared Sport by Knit Crate. It is the colorway Lapis, and it's 70% Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, and 10% Selena on uh, 300 yards to 100 grams. And it is sparkly. Look at all that Selena. And this is the one I'm jealous of. <laughs> and then um, this is the Yarnberry Hunger Games um, Mystery Club. This is the October month, right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, so if you ordered it and you haven't gotten, although you should, because I think I got it right after we podcast last time. Mm -hmm. um, this is it, and it was based on Primrose. Everdeen. When they're doing, when they're calling, about a caller name. So that was what the picture was, yeah. So look how pretty it is. So pretty. And then um, it came with these stitch markers. Those or are stitch, also so pretty. Yeah, stitch markers and then this progress paper. Look how pretty that is. So she, when I opened it, she was like, now I'm jealous. Yes. <laughs> that was funny. And then. Um, I purchased, order. yes, I purchased, we, we, we combined <laughs> our order so we could achieve free shipping. Yep. And it also doesn't make sense for us to make two separate orders. It's coming to the same yeah, house. It's yeah. It's to the same place. We <laughs> might as well just do it at the same time. So, so I showed my finished Simple Hug Cardi by Cozy Up Knits last episode. And I, in that episode, I said I had plans to knit at least two more. So I purchased wool of the Andes in different colors to stripe into my next one. And here they are. Aren't they pretty? <laughs> I think they're looks like so a box of pretty. yarn I would show you. <laughs> <laughs> so those are gonna when I cast on my next sim simple hog cardi, those are gonna be in there. And I'll tell you the colors then um, when I cast it on. Okay. And then like I just said, we placed in the next order. But anyway, so I got more Swish DK to make Among Us characters. And I only have three, so I'll tell you the names now. This is Bird Bath. This is Arctic. So in Among Us, it is called Cyan. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. So, but anyways, so this is Tom's character. Okay. Tom's my second son. Yes. He's 17. <laughs> and then my character is Orange, but this is not Orange. I don't even know. What is Clementine? Clementine. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, so it... The colors are really close, but it's a little hard to get an exact color, mm -hmm. but they're close enough, and the people who they're going to are guys that are in their 20s for the picky. most part, mm -hmm. so they'll think it's hilarious because, I mean, those little guys look funny, so, but that's that, and then I got more stitch markers that are the ones that I've been using. I've already ordered them once, and then... This is for spinning. Oh, I did the little spinning, but it's the same wool that I've oh, been okay. using. The, but this, the Shetland wool. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just the black Shetland wool that I've spun. But this is to gauge how wool, what yarn you're using, wool spinning. So it tells you how many, so you wrap it around basically and it tells you what weight of yarn you're using based on how many wraps there are in that little area. Mm -hmm. And then... These are going to be a little hard. Mason meant some too. But these are little handmade tags. 
they're just really cute so plus we were like a couple dollars away from free shipping so <laughs> i bought a little extra stuff and then the last thing i have is a wool by woolberry fiber yarn but i did not buy this from her this <laughs> is a de-stash from lofty loops and i didn't know she had a de-stash but i've looked at her yarn a couple other times and i debated buying some but then i would in the de-stash and this was like cheaper than it is to actually buy her yarn and this is one of the colorways that i saw when it i don't know if it was when it came out but i saw it once and i was like oh i need that and it's called holiday hangover sure that's so right and like it is so pretty and like so i mean there's all different kinds of speckles in it so like i mean there's purple ones and pinks up there browns and greens and blues and then there's more browns and oranges right there mm -hmm. but I was so excited about this. Mm -hmm. Like, well, it is nice. I purchased um, a D a D stash yarn once from Vanessa of Historian Knits, and you do tend to get a, a you know a discount. Yes, yeah. the knitter is hoping to unload it. <laughs> yeah, but I was so excited. Mm -hmm. I saw this and I was like, "Is that what I wanted?" And I clicked on it. I was like, "I have to buy this." Mm -hmm. So I got it. <laughs> and I'm th I'm debating to make it into socks or make it into a colorwork sweater for next Christmas because I mean it is holiday hangover after all. <laughs> so yeah. All right, is that all you purchased? Yep. Okay. So we're running out of time here because <laughs> the storage on my phone can only handle so much. Um, <laughs> But real quick, we are still hosting the Finish It Up Fall Make Along. We are um, hosting that on Instagram and in our Facebook group. Um, all the details for that Make Along will be down in the description box below. Or on either pages. So Facebook yes, or Instagram. on in Instagram. We have a post on Instagram and we also have a um, post in our Facebook group. And right now, you should consider joining <laughs> because we only have um, a couple entries, I think, in both spots. Yep. So we've got a good chance to win a pattern. Um, and is that it? I think so. Okay. I feel like there was something else. Oh, real quick. So the month of November, we'll have one more podcast episode um, in two weeks. Yep. And, um, but then we have decided that the month of December, we're not gonna do Vlogmas. I know that's a thing where people vlog every day. It's I fun. Know, it's crazy. Yeah, just, you don't wanna see you all that. You don't wanna see that. <laughs> um, it's hard to get a moment when it's not crazy, so yeah. we're not gonna try that. Out. Yeah, so, but we've decided that we're gonna podcast once a week, the month of December. We'll have two regular episodes like we normally do with um, finished objects, works in progress, and um, acquisitions. But we're also gonna have two bonus episodes. So um, look for that <laughs> in December. And the, you know, one more we have coming up this month. Yep. So, all right, that's it for now. We'll see you in two weeks. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.